We are Steve and Jill. Together, we've been buying and reselling land since the 90s. Our data-centric approach leaves our buyers asking, how can you sell it so cheap? Here on the Land Academy Show, we answer that and more. Steve and Jill here. Hello. Welcome to the Land Academy Show, entertaining land investment talk. I'm Stephen Jack Butella. And I'm Jill DeWitt, broadcasting from awesome Scottsdale, Arizona. Today, Jill and I talk about Land Academy membership versus owning a franchise. Couldn't be more different. But it sounds like, well, hey, wait a minute, though. But I am, uh, well, membership, Land Academy to be an investor, right? So it's really kind of about being an investor versus this business. What business do you want to be in? You want to be an investor, which is a, what we teach you how to do and set you up for, versus owning a franchise, which is kind of, they teach you how to run, let's just say it's Cold Stone um, Creamery, right? You go even go to Cold Stone School, and then you have your business. But there's a lot of different things going on. We teach you how to get free and autonomous and independent and happy and done. <laughs> we don't have our hooks in you forever, like let's say Cold Stone. Well, we'll talk about that because I made a list and you're tying into my list. So don't, don't think that I'm, I'm promote. I'm trying to just state the facts, man. I'm not talking about you. Okay. I just, I'm not a huge franchise fan. I'm well, no kidding. <laughs> Before we get into it, let's take a question posted by one of our members on the landinvestors.com online community. It's free. I'm here to tell you truth time. There's one and only one franchise this person would like, likes to go to and it's Wendy's. <laughs> <laughs> just because I want to eat for free? Yeah, no, just the chilies. <laughs> no, not because you want to eat for free. I'm here. I'm just truth time. Uh, uh, you're like, oh, I don't like that. I don't like that. I want to go. You don't like the franchise anything, but you're like, I oh, do you like Wendy's chili. <laughs> <laughs> How's that? Okay. Let's see. If, what, if you had a franchise, it would be a Zales Jewelry or something. No. What would my franchise be? Oh, Nordstrom. Yeah. <laughs> That's for sure. Well, it's not a franchise. That's I know, true. I know. Oh, shit. Neither is sales. Oh, yeah. I'm just I, joking around. I don't know what my, maybe Subway? No, <laughs> I have to think about that. <laughs> okay. Herbert asks, hello, all. I know this isn't our typical vacant land or sing, single family convo, but I would like some help clarifying some things and figured what better place to gain information about this topic than from our super knowledgeable and amazing group here at Land Investors. Okay, Herbert, are you trying to get brownie points because you're winning? <laughs> it's working. <laughs> All right. I'm pretty new to real estate in general, never owning a home before, so I'd like your advice on the process slash plan of action for acquiring a four-unit multifamily property to serve as a primary residence. I plan to purchase the four units by using either FHA or FHA 203K loan to renovate and then live here in, in Miami, Florida. My questions are, number one, am I correct to assume that our direct mail approach to acquiring real estate is also the best way to acquire my first multifamily deal for a primary residence. Yes. What are some of the differences in the approach that I should be aware of? Number two, will House Academy teach me how to acquire multifamilies as well as single families? Yes. Stephen, ready, go. Yes, uh, but I have to tell you, I think you're on the wrong path here. Ah, uh-oh. Well, like you said, Herbert, you really want to pick the brain from the knowledgeable, amazing group here at Land Investors. And one of them is going to really pick apart your thing. And I don't, I'm sure he's right. You got to live somewhere. I understand sure. that. I'm quoting my friend, Jill. Got to live somewhere. <laughs> Recently, this is, I got a speech on this. Can he's we not just, sore about it at all. Can too. we just have a house that I can move into Yes, this that's is very not true. going to be for sale two weeks later? Because the market went up. you got to have a place to live. Well, I want one that if I want to paint the wall pink, which I don't, I am allowed to. <laughs> I don't know what your situation is, Herbert. If you have kids yeah. and stuff, then that really makes sense. And you're in, in a long, long, long run uh, buying a fourplex for a really good amount of uh, a low amount of money for less than it's worth, let's say, and having three other tenants in there that are really good. Uh, you know, I think you know where I'm going with this. There's a lot of things that can go wrong with this. There are not a lot of things that can go wrong with buying a vacant piece of property for 20 or 30% of what it's actually worth in its current state and reselling it. And so while I applaud this approach, and I think there's very cer certainly a, a 
a point in my life where I wanted to do this too. And I mm -hmm. heavily went into it. Had I known about direct mail, I would have done it that way. But I, and I never fought, followed through on it. Right. So you're, you're dead on about, yes, this is the best way to buy a fourplex. Absolutely the best way. And the, and the two or three K loans process, FHA, uh, is fantastic as long as it qualifies. And there's, you know, be careful before you send out mail because the FHA qualification for a property and its condition is very specific. You can't buy a fallen down property with an FHA loan. They're going to make the seller do all kinds of stuff. I, I did this with a primary residence really early in my professional life and it was a disaster. I've also inadvertently sold property on FHA, not knowing that the real estate agent that was representing me was bringing in FHA type loans, buyers with that. And then they, they just really, their appraisal process is very different. There's a lot of stuff. So please re research it. That shouldn't stop you from sending out the mail. Maybe you just buy a fourplex, uh, send the mail out, buy a fourplex, resell it. So here's what I was going to say. Like, I would say, first of all, I understand where you're going with this, but I'd like you to take the, this plan all the way to the end, you know, and really think about, you know, do the numbers. We, we, we do this in our own world. I want to see the HUD one when I buy it and the HUD one when I sell it. The closing statement. Right. Means, yeah. And really think about what am I going to get out of this? And how long am I going to hold this? And what's my rent going to be? And I'd like to really see Herbert in a spreadsheet after one year, like I'm going to buy it. I, here's my budget. Here's how much I'm expecting to put into it. I'm going to buy this year. I want all the details figured out. I'm going to go no older than this and no younger than this. Cause I know the renovations, I can keep them in this range. This is a square footage. I've done all the math. I've figured it out. Price per square footage, what it's going to be. So I know that after I put this money in and I do the renovations and I'm Pay all done real in 30. Estate fees. Yeah. You know, FHA is going to have a whole, I don't mean to interrupt you, a whole slew of appraisers right. and um, inspectors that are all going to find stuff. It's, this is a, you're in a, a long way from uh, accomplishing this. Right. And, and I, and you need to account for, I mean, we only have four units and one's vacant. That's 25% of your revenue. Mm -hmm. So you need to really kind of think about that. How are you going to handle that? Can you afford to handle that? So all the way to the end. Okay. And I really like to see really a five and 10 year plan. And we're, we're going to start, it's going to, um, it's going to be a million dollars. And in five years, I'm going to have, am I going to have 1.5 or am I going to have three? You know, I, and I don't think it's going to be three realistically, but I, so I want to see, and then I, cause I would really highly encourage you. And this is where I think Steven's going with this. Now do another plan, do a, another spreadsheet going, all right, I put this million dollars into properties Land. and I flipped them for cash. Yeah. Where would I be in five years? And with by the way, not have to deal million. with FHAs right. or these inspections or dealing with a tenant Tenants. that moved out or they can't pay their thing because they lost their job because of COVID or, uh, you know, I all of the possible crazy scenarios and just really, I'm not... Just no matter what, I want you to go with your eyes wide open and make a really good decision and not be going, shucks, darn, I didn't account for that. Mom's right here. Thanks. Every single thing she, you just said, Jill. And there's more, yeah. you know, which we won't get into. This is a long path. You know, here's the problem with FHA. Why FHA 203? He's, you know, I'm, I'm asking. Well, I, I mean, it's just because you don't have to put any money down. So when, or it's, it's like 3% or 5%, it's a very small amount of money down, which is attractive if you can find the right property. It's also putting you in a position where you're almost immediately over leveraged out of the box. So you're, now you're paying interest on 98% of, uh, of what you're borrowing instead of what you should be doing, you know, is 20 to 25, 75%. So it puts you in a situation where Jill's right, you got a cost cover, uh, not only the maintenance and all the stuff, you're gonna have mortgage insurance at that uh, loan to value level and on and on and on. So there's a lot of stuff that can go wrong and it will. And, and unless you're buying a new building in Miami, which I highly doubt. Right. There's so much. We have friends that are in this world and are like trying to get out of it, you know, as fast as they a can. a very, very close friend. He's also mm -hmm. in Land Academy for a reason. Because mm -hmm. this was his in LA County, in Los Angeles City. Mm -hmm. This was his business model for years and years. And it's no longer feasible uh, because the rent laws and the landlord tenant laws have so right. dramatically changed in LA County specifically. That's Florida's, a whole nother thing you can't account for. They could change think, stuff on you. I think it's Dade County. And then you can't, you can't even do the stuff you think you're going to do, you mm. know? So and if they don't want to pay, scary. If the tenant, I know in LA County, I, I'm sure Dade County is different. 
Right. I think Miami's in Dade County. I hope it's different. I mean, tenants in California in general have six months to a year uh, before they are required to leave the premises without pay. Right. And it's they're taking advantage time. of it. It's killing our buddy. That's true. It's devaluing true. his whole asset portfolio that he's built for a lot of years. Mm-hmm. So, and will, will we teach how to do? Yes. So the, the question is, will House Academy teach me? Sure. You could do House Academy for for uh, all kinds of uh, properties. There, it's What's different in a nutshell with House Academy is pricing. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's really kind of the thing. It's really all about the pricing because it's very different. You don't go in the hall like we do with land. You're not going to get stuff like that. And you're dealing with, you know, bigger transactions yeah. or more involved. Pricing is a lot easier. You, know. you have algorithm based pricing versus kind of how we it's do true. it with land, which is a little bit more vague only because there's so much more information available for houses and for multi-tenant properties mm-hmm. and commercial. Exactly. Good question though. I'm curious, by the way, when was this, you know, was this put in there recently? Very, very. Ah, okay. Got it. Why did you ask? I, cause I, was it pre COVID or post COVID? Oh no. I thought, was this Jeez. an old question that was that somebody dug up and threw in here for us to ask, to answer? This is know? less than oh. all of it. Then this whole recording session is less than three days. Cause in my, in my little bubble, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even thinking about this property type. This, this, and I'm not, I don't, I'm not picking on you at all, but I'm just saying if it were me, this is not something I would be seeking out, especially one of four, one of 400 units. I'm going to buy it and maybe because I could take the hit of a couple more rent, rent it out. That's fine. If I got 400 doors, but four doors and one's not paying. Oh, that's, a, that's huge. You know what? This you is, aren't paying because one of them, you, I live there, by the way. That's here's scary. how apartment owners get rich. And here's how they file bankruptcy. Number one, apartment owners get rich because they're buying class A, fully leased up apartment buildings that are one, two, three, 500 units for on a capitalization rate. And they're using private equity because they know people and they clink glasses with the right people and they buy it. And it's leveraged properly, mostly with equity. That's what private equity is. So they're not, there's not a lot of huge debt service coverage ratio. They bring in a, an extremely experienced property manager who renovates or does something to the property, in some cases right now, just allow pets mm-hmm. to, uh, to broaden the rental base and they increase their rent. A small percentage leave, they stick their middle finger up and say, I'm not doing it. The vast majority pay. And then the vacant apartments get filled up with pet owners. I'm just using that as an example. Sometimes they renovate their units if it's older, an older building. It resets the capitalization rate and they resell the property to another private equity group. All this causes lack of affordable housing, which is every, which is the uproar about that. That's how you win in a multi-tenant building. You can't really win with four units unless you're in a market that's so rapidly appreciating, like California, that you know, and probably uh, Florida too. So I hate to see people, young, intelligent people, uh, try to make this work with a four-unit building. Oh, but wait, there's more. <laughs> Don't forget, in California now, they have restricted the amount of percentage you can raise the rent. Hmm. So here's what's going on in California. There are falling down buildings that, that wonderful landlords would renovate, but they can't, they can't renovate the building and raise the rent. So they just won't raise, they won't renovate the building. And then, then everybody loses. Everybody's losing. It's, and this is, this is, this is like new changes that took effect in the last I don't know, a year or so. I just got and in trouble for ranting on the last show. <laughs> <laughs> Let it out. What happened to, Let what it happened out. to boy, it's so funny. <laughs> Let it out, man. Boy, what happened to, to sweet uh, sunshine <laughs> Southern California peace of love is now like, you know what Southern California can take with this and shove it now. <laughs> this new law. Oh, of course they're gonna put one new law on us. Really? You really? Okay, sorry. <laughs> it's, it's my turn to rant. Let's get to the topic. No, I'm, I, I'm not done with that. Uh, oh, you're not done with this? <laughs> Herbert, this is what I want you to do. Reach out to your friends and family. I don't know what your personal situation is. I don't want to know. Hopefully you don't have 22, 22 kids or something. But if you're on your own and you don't have to provide a envir- healthy environment for young children, all kidding aside, go live in your parents' basement or something. Like asbestos-free? Go live in your parents' garage. I, I'm really serious about this. There's asbestos. You know? And and put a plan together, and it says I'm not I'm not a derelict. I'm an incredibly intelligent entrepreneur. 
I don't care what my friends think. I can always get new friends. And so now you're living for free or for a very small amount of money. So you don't have to have a job or you can have a job for not a part-time job. Join a group like Land Academy or some other place. Give yourself a year, accumulate a ton of money, and then go, go give, live your life. Mm -hmm. So this fourplex idea is not uh, new. Mm -hmm. And I get it. I would love to live for free in one unit the, and with three paying for awesome my bills. tenants that live next door and high five me. Uh, and they every, every time I, we see each other. Provide beer all the time. Yeah, free beer in the courtyard. Yeah. One of them's a chef. <laughs> Everybody looks like Hollywood. Everyone's oh, beautiful. It looks like Melrose Place. Mm -hmm. They're all Hollywood quality people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 That's awesome. <laughs> Girls Sunday topless mm -hmm. all the time. <laughs> I wasn't going to go there. Okay. <laughs> I did it for you. <laughs> okay. Let's move on. Today's topic, Land Academy membership versus owning a franchise. This is why you're listening. Man, so, we're over on time. I oh. didn't realize the membership part. I was just thinking about Land Academy membership meaning being an investor versus owning a franchise. So that's how I took it. So that's how I'm going to answer this. I'm just telling you. Oh, go ahead. Okay. So you're you're in Land Academy or your own investor. You you you're building you're up your own, own company, right? So what's 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 going on? You know, good news and bad. I'm actually put all in all the good news. And then we could talk about the bad news. Oh, I'll cover the bad and news. I can, <laughs> there we go. Yeah, it's perfect. So being your own boss versus a franchise. Okay, what's great about being your own boss? Get to wing it. And some people that freaks them out. For me, I love it. No one's telling me what to do. I just as I want. And you know what the pro what the end goal is? The end thing is all the profits are mine. I'm not sharing with anybody. So here's a here's a franchise. Okay, this is not a bad plan. And you're gonna give us all the negatives here. So all right, franchise. I got a total roadmap. I know exactly what to do. I know when construction's to do. I know T minus 90 days from my door opening. I literally have a have it in my hands and a checklist to know what's gonna happen, when to order the inventory and what fridges to pick out. I know the, the build out plans that's been handed to me. I have the equipment list um, and I have the inventory. And, and where to buy it. And where to buy it. And what and, price I'm going to pay. And that's it. And that's the thing. You pay for it. Sure. I'm going to make some money, but so are they. So now you want to continue with, that's my, that's my quick, you know, how mm -hmm. I compare the two kind of on the, it could be pros for some people. Here's a Domino's location, pizza location, and here's Jack's Pizza right next door. Jack and Jill's Pizza. <laughs> when you open those two we places. We almost had Jack and Jill's Pizza. <laughs> when you open those two places, it's what Jill said. Mm -hmm. You are told by Domino's how much you're going to pay, how much you're going to charge. You have, And then a percent of reg revenue goes to them. You buy all of the food from them. The hiring, the, policies, the hiring policies. The hiring policy. They write down how to run your business. What you get in exchange for that is national marketing, theoretically. You get very, very little control over your business, but it theoretically more of a guarantee for, of profit because it's just bigger. Jack and Jill's pizza stop, uh, place next door, you're on your own. You can charge whatever you want. You can buy, you can get creative. You can buy food uh, wherever you want. You can staff how you'd like and on and on and on. You choose the, the rent, the build out, what the place looks like. You don't have to order the sign from corporate. The coupons. This is what it is. You're you're free. Don't we live in the land of the free? Yeah. Aren't we supposed to be independent entrepreneurs? So Land Academy is something in the, it's kind of in the middle. It's a huge amount of instruction. It's a group of uh, like-kind people and let's say mentors or uh, peers who have been seeing the ins and outs and we're all here to help each other. Just spend five minutes on landinvestors.com or if you're a member on Discord and you're going to see how much all of us help each other. So and I don't believe in taking a percentage of your revenue. This whole topic came up because somebody recently asked me, well, that's cool. This whole Land Academy sounds great. How much do you guys keep of, of the deals that your members do? And I, I just I'm like, I looked up and said that never crossed my mind. When yeah. we started Land Academy, I didn't sit around with Jill and say, you know, we should take 5% of the profit of all of our members yeah. and their deals. That's insane. Right. You know who would win? Us. And that's it. It's mm -hmm. like a real estate agent. I don't want to get involved in your deal. Yeah. I'm not going to stand in the way of you being successful. I, mm -hmm. Like, I want to teach you all this stuff and get you, provide the tools, get you acclimated, tell you the real deal. You know, just like this fourplex, the truth about a fourplex, 
earlier uh, with the question. And then I want you to go succeed. And when you're done, spread your wings and leave if you need to, like a kid, like a child. That was That's beautiful. what I want. I don't, we're not here. And then there's, cause there's always gonna be new people behind you. Mm -hmm. That's what this is for. It's like an entrepreneurial class in a business school. I was gonna add, and then here's, here's the end, end, end goal, which has and does happen. Someday, some deal is gonna come across your desk and you're gonna go, oh, I know who's gonna do this with me. And you're gonna call us. That's right. And we're gonna help you get the deal done, fund the deal, whatever it is. And then we're both gonna win. That's exactly right. That's why we're here. That's the beauty of all this. Need to send out a few thousand offers to property owners like us? Check out offers and the number two owners.com. So that's offers to owners.com. No setup fees, free old mail merge, exceptional service, and now including just released for everyone, concierge data and pricing. It's awesome. Give offers to owners a call today. Happy you could join us today. Five days a week, you can find us right here on the Land Academy Show. Tomorrow, the episode on the Land Academy Show is called What We Learned in the First Four Weeks of hosting the Land Academy Accountability Group. You are not alone in your real estate ambition. That was fun. We had a lot on, a lot to say today <laughs> for some <laughs> interesting reason. It's hilarious. <laughs> so I love it. We, we are Stephen Joe. Joe. Information and inspiration to buy undervalued property. We hope you find our content valuable and we appreciate your support. If you have not already, please check out our channel and hit the subscribe button. And your comments and suggestions help us uh, to create the content you're here for. Hitting the like button helps to support our channel's algorithm and gauge your interest for future shows. 